Async allows us to make requests to a server or multiple servers much more efficiently and therefore much quicker. In this video, I'm going to use HTTPX's async client. We're going to construct a short piece of code that's going to have a couple of functions that's going to allow us to open and read a stores URL list from a text file and then asynchronously make requests to all of those URLs and pull back some arbitrary data. So the idea behind this video is for those of you that know a little bit about async but maybe don't know how you can utilize it in your own programs or your own code and therefore might give you a few ideas of what you can do. This code is actually very similar to a program that I wrote and used myself although it's going to be much more scaled down and I'm going to leave it at the end so maybe you can build upon it and make it more useful for yourselves if you're interested. When you start looking into async you're going to find that you need to get yourself a high quality proxy set like the one from today's sponsor IP Royal. So I have been working with IP Royal for a while now and I can thoroughly recommend that if you want to give proxies a go that you take a look at their Royal residential proxies as I think this is probably going to be the best bet for you to look at. There are proxies for all different use cases though, so if you're not really worried about stealth and you just need throughput, they've got data center proxies for you, or if you really want to go the whole hog, you want proper, good, static IP residential proxies that you can use, they've got you covered. They will all auto-rotate for you as well, which means you don't have to add a load of extra things to your code, and putting proxies into code like I'm doing here or others with requests is really simple. There is also unlimited concurrent sessions as well, which means projects like the one we're looking at here with async will work great with them too. So if this sounds like something that you're gonna be interested in and you wanna give it a go, maybe see what proxies can do for you and your web scraping and your projects, then go and check out the link in the description below. And you can also use my code JWR50 for 50% off your first order for Royal Residential Proxies. Definitely worth a go and thank you very much for IP Royal for sponsoring this video. So we are going to be using HTTPX, so I'm going to import that at the top of the screen, HTTPX, and we also need a SyncIO, which is in the Python standard library. If you don't have a, uh, HTTPX installed, you'll need to pip install it. So we are going to create a couple of functions. The most important thing is that our functions are going to start with the async keyword like this. I'm going to call this one fetch store and I'm going to give it a couple of bits of information like client and URL. So the client is going to be the async session that we're going to be using from HTTPX's async client, which is going to come in the next function as well as the URL. So this one is basically the one that's going to do that each and every individual request, but it's going to be fitted in into the tasks as I'll show you. From here, we need to use our await keyword. So I'm going to say the response is going to be await client.get the URL. These are the two main keywords that you're going to see coming up, async and await. Now I know Shopify really well, so I know that if we have slash products.json at the end of a Shopify URL, we're going to get a JSON response with all of the products that are on that page. From here, I'm just going to go ahead and pull out some arbitrary information, but this is, could be a place where you'd want to expand it if you were doing this and you wanted to get more data. So I'm just going to say products is going to be equal to our response.json object here, and I'm going to return out a tuple. So I'm going to return out the URL so I know which product is associated to which URL and then I'm going to reference products and again this is just I know from Shopify products we're going to get the first item and then we're going to ask for the title. Now I'll show you where this comes from on the screen now but this could be a bit that might be different for you if you're using other URLs or whatever it is this could be HTML even so just bear that in mind as we go through. So this is the first function done, nice and easy. It looks very similar to a normal function, just has those extra async and await keywords. And again, we're returning data just like you would normally. The next one we're going to do is our main function. So this is going to be async def again, and this is going to be main. Now within here, we're going to be using the async client, and this is what's going to be our session that we're going to pass into this other function, which is then going to turn into tasks, which we're then going to run at the end. So what we want to do now is we just want to get our URL list done. So I'm going to do with open our text file, which is stores.txt. I'm going to open that as read as F. Now I'm just going to do some list comprehension to create a URLs list. So this will be line.strip. We want to strip to make sure there's no white space for line in f.read lines. So this is just going to read every line in the text file and we're going to save it in, a URL, in our URLs list uh, after stripping any white space, if there is any. 
Now we can start to actually work with the async client. So again, we want to use with, but we want to do async with because again, this is an async part of the function. So we need it to say async with. We're going to say our httpx.async client. And we're going to say as client. So this is a context manager, much like this one, except this one, we're going to be using the client uh, here. This is what is going to get passed into this function. The next thing we want to do is create our tasks list. We're going to create a task for each URL using our fetch store function. We're going to save it in this list and then we're going to gather it all together at the end and we're going to let the program run through and then go ahead and do the async and await for each of those URLs, eliminating all the time that we're waiting for things to come back. We're actually going to be running other things in those time whilst we're doing it. So we need to create our task for each one. So I'm going to do for URL in URLs. So this is our URL list that we just created. Let's put a space here, so it's a bit tidier. We're going to say that we need to actually create a task. So I'm going to do tasks.append. So we're going to be adding it to this tasks list. And we're going to do again with our async io dot create task. Now we need to give it the coroutine here, and this is going to be our fetch store function. So we'll say fetch store and we'll give it the client and the URL. So the client is now our async client, so we can work with that. And the URL is for each one that we've looped through in this list. So now we can use our await. So we're gonna say our results are equal to await, and we're gonna do async io.gather. And we're gonna pass it all of the tasks. We're gonna use the star here because it's gonna unpack those as it goes. From this, we're just going to return out of the main function our results. So we are creating our async client session, and we are then creating a task for each one using the coroutine, this async and await function we created for each URL. And then we're going to combine all of it into a list, return that back, and we will end up with a list of tuples. Now I'm just going to do if name is equal to main to run this at the end. And to do so, we do uh, our results because it returns out of the function is equal to asyncio dot run the main function. This will sort everything out for us. Uh, and then I'm just going to print out the results at the end like this. So let's give it a go. Let's run this and we should get back all of the information. Now this is something I think about 41 different stores. There we go. And you'll see that we have a list of tuples with the store name at like this. Now over 41 different URLs, this is not going to save us a whole load of time as opposed to just doing it synchronously. Although as you can see there, that was pretty quick. This really comes into its own when you start to use hundreds of URLs or more because we can eliminate all that waiting time. So what this does is it makes it more efficient in a way. Nothing is going quicker. We can't speed up the response that we get from the server. But what we can do is using async and await and async IO is that we can fill in those gaps with making more requests uh, that we have in our tasks. So instead of waiting for the whole cycle, the request to be made and the response to be collected, we're going to actually create multiple requests and then wait and match and get the results back all together as they come back. And this is what makes this much, much quicker and much more efficient. Now in the code that I've got here, we're not actually doing anything with the results. However, as I've showed you here, we've got 20, 23 lines of code that's going to get that data really quickly. You could then maybe choose to export some more information from it, get more data, and then I would go ahead and save that data to a database. That should be much quicker and your whole process will be much, much quicker. So if you wanted to expand on this, pull some more data out, find your own URLs, save it to a database or even export it to a CSV file and go from there. So that's it for this one. If you've got some value out of this and you've enjoyed it in any way, I would appreciate if you could like the video, subscribe if you haven't already. There's loads of content like this on my channel, loads more to come too. And if you've enjoyed this video about looking at Shopify products, I think you're gonna like this one here where I go into it in much more detail.